Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> we'll be talking about how to lab, how to bet leveling, and um, do and don't. I will kill some holy cows. About the uh, problem is some parts that I will tell will uh, be almost impossible to, to show on screen because you have to to do it on a physical print. And then you need to be close. So if you want to see it in real life, you can show it on your smile printer here. Um, as I said, my name is Johnny Linden. I'm the programmer behind a tool called Marlin 2. I will do a lot of out of bed leveling demystify. Take away all the mystic parts around out of bed leveling. Uh, there is one big thing. Start with reading the fucking manual. There is a lot of things written by the creators of the out of bed leveling that someone starts to forget. Um, oops. This is taken from the best source uh, to get this, and the uh, thing that I want to highlight is, even if you have a perfectly flat bed, which is the best way to start, if you don't have a flat bed, out of the bed leveling will not cure a bad print. The thing out of bed leveling do is take away the flaws in off that is angled in any way and it's made for tiddly or YouTube, you will never get a perfect print on that. You must start with perfect flat. And here it says that, and this is taken from the official Marlin documentation uh, site. Um, this is even more important for Delta. Uh, to have a delta with a non-flat bed is almost impossible because the movements of a delta. So um, I don't know if there is any delta that's working without auto bed leveling or working well. That's my opinion. So let's make the bed level. I tried to make a movie of this. I have made a tool uh, that uh, used the printer as a measuring device. It is actually a measuring device. All things with using probes in any kind to measure the bed and move it. That's so difficult. If you have a probe, use the probe that you already have and use the coordinates that the printer gives you. So what I've done in my little program, which is free, you can get it at, um, um, at smallin 3 d printer tools.se. You download it, and you configure it, and you, those four corners, oops, let it go. Uh, those four corners, you uh, set the coordinates for those four corners. That's not the nozzle coordinates, because it's the probe. Why do I need the middle? Because that is the parking zone, because when you are adjusting, you don't want to uh, 
uh, excluded to be in the way to park it somewhere. I park it there. I'm right-handed. That's why. Then, uh, what the printer is doing is, uh, is trying to, to find those four points and should start somewhere. I young. So, when that is done, you see those check marks. This means that this one is perfectly zero. That is also the most difficult part to adjust. Then this is about 0 0.05 millimeters off. It's okay. This one needs to be turned and the resolution is not so good, but here it says how much you must turn it anti-clockwise, counterclockwise to get it flat. So just by pressing that button, do the printer's job, and then you get a suggestion. This is how the, the uh, software is thinking. This is how you should uh, adjust your bed to get it flat. Two or three times, then it's flat. Because the guesswork is away. It says how the clock works and how much on each corner. That's the first part. It's not how to level bed leveling, it's to get the bed flat in four corners. Next thing is uh, the prison about. Whoops. Offset. This is also difficult. Many have used uh, many different kinds of of uh, measurements. How to do this? The first part is behind the, this arrow. There is a value. That is M eight five one. It's actually stored in the firmware. It's The tool that I have made is Dr. Probe. Then the probe is searching for the bed, finds the bed. <coughs> then we use the more common method of paper under no nozzle to, to find it. So we start lowering, lowering the probe. And Things. Oops. The nozzle is okay. And when I lower this one, uh, it's a bit too, too, too. Uh, then I should have a printer here and show how to find the spot where the nozzle is. Those two bed. When I feel the paper under the nozzle, I press. I press that button, and then it starts doing a lot of calculation because you know how modern is program to use that value. And then I have this physical value, which is where the nozzle meets the bed. That's two different coordinates. This is the one assumed, and the other one is physical. So um, the calculation would say here it says um, that. Um, it believed that it was 150, I think. 
the resolution on the screen is bad. And I found the nozzle touching the bed as at 0 0.25. So it measured and says, okay, do you want to use this value? And it will change this. No need to go into firmware and change it. Even if it's, if it's possible, you can do it. We can also change it here. Then you have the nozzle box. And it's done in a couple of minutes. And you can do it on almost every printer. But you need the pro and you need two minutes download. And then you have perfect offset made. That is the main part where nozzle is dragging on the glass and it's too high, too low, and you don't know where. Find the perfect paper and try this and keep that paper, whatever paper you use, or feel a gauge, the thin steel plate you use in mechanics. So, next thing is to test the, um, the actual out of bed leveling. I use my tool, you can do whatever. It's just sending out uh, a command to the printer. Um, when you send out this command, it will, it will do a lot of things like uh, it starts with homing and then stop measuring. Here is the grid with the measuring box. And if it's almost impossible to see, but you get a grid of heights of the bed. And what's happening in it is that the, the, the printer will compensate for those heights. Like if you have tiles or uh, square tiles, they are not even. They are floating. Each square is uh, the corner is that is one square, this is one square, and so on. And it would compensate. So the nozzle would be more like tracking or tramming, following the bed instead of just going flat over. So it tries to compensate all the time. This means that the first layer will be tied to the bed. And it will stick to the bed. The second layer is like on the grooves. It will fill up more and more and more and more and more of the five layers. And there is no need for alphabet leveling in there. Five layers, 1.2 millimeters height. That is, first millimeter is going wave, like in waves. Then it will. 15 millimeters higher, you will not see the waves anymore. It will be flat. And when you measure it, it has been stuck on the glass bed or whatever bed you have. And you can measure it and it's it's working. It's stuck on the bed. The first layer is the most important layer to have. And that is why tramming the bed is a good solution. Feel free to ask me something. Um, then, how is a bed actually looking like? If you take those measurements and you say, okay, it's, uh, it's perfect, it's done, uh, it's, it's done its more marvelous work. Then you want to look at how is the thing how is this affecting the bed? The bed is actually 
almost every bed that has a glass bed on top is flat. There is many that says the port. Okay. Something wrong from something wrong. Okay. Uh, this was bad. I just got a black screen. talking because the rest of the presentation is pure black. Um, when uh, you look at the, the bed and you probe the bed with a grid like the grid from the D29, you get a lot of points and the software is able to compensate for those points. But if you look at the bed with those points, it's like a hill from all sides. And people is start uh, saying that um, the bed is not flat. I have bought 10 millimeter thick glass feet and it's not flat. That's not true. It is flat. But if you look at your your um, steel, Chinese, polished uh, rods, they are not flat. They are flat if you put them on, on the table and roll them. But if you put them in the printer and put one kilo of uh, extruder on the middle, they will bend. So they will look like this. And bending is one tenth of a millimeter. That's more than the first layer in some cases. And that is why it's not stuck. And that is why it's stuck in the middle, but not in the corners, because they are far away from the middle. So, uh, alphabet leveling helps you to have bent flaws in your printer and so on, and get a, a, a perfect first layer. Um, my little tool, which I could show, but not, not now, is actually doing a graph of how those flaws are on the bed. And it's not equal on the bed. They are going up and down. So it's looking like more deadless. But take away the extruder and do a new test. It's flat. The difference is that the whole structure is bending. And that, that is not something Newton discovered 300 years ago. And that's nothing we can do about. So, the best part of uh, there is different parts of auto bed leveling. You have the probe part, and you have all the also the manual part. If you don't have a probe, use the manual uh, mesh bed leveling because it <coughs> will get you better first layer support, first layer, and then the rest will work. It sounded like half of my presentation is gone. Um, I can show you this. Um, I don't know what to do. Love it. Don't put it in there. I can see you in the end of the board. Yeah. Hello? 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 H
kanske har sin viewer till en printer här ute som har helt annars. Ja, och programmar. Och programmar. This is what the demo devil. Something works for when you can show it, it's not working anymore. Um, I've done, you see what I'm, I've done this in Camtasia, it should be. Okay, something went wrong. I can't help it. Sorry. But questions, I can answer. I can try to answer everything without the presentation. Sorry <laughs> for wasting your time. Is it uh, that uh, duplicated to have a harder way to get learning? It's not hard, to, but they they need it more because they have a complex structure, and it's very often that they have a curve that when they're moving the three axes, they get a, a bone, and they need to to compensate for that. It's not a flaw. It's very narrow to have the the measurements of the delta rise. And get it wrong. You can get that shape of the movement or that shape of the movement. And that is uh, very, very little that needs to be changed. When you are close, very close in the delta, and you add on to bed leveling, you get perfect first layer. But you cannot have a 10 millimeters uh, uh, arrow in the radius, then you get a huge um, uh, arrow, and that will automate that in another conversation. But the, the thing that automate learning is compensating for is the fact that PLA is lifting up the corners. Because the middle is actually correct. Corners are not. So the other thing is I like block spells. Because whenever you put something on the bed, you will never get it totally flat. If you put a sheet of something without naming a brand on top of the bed, you get bubbles, you get different uh, layers of glue under, so it, the bed would be bad, uh, not so good anymore. The glass bed is almost perfect. The other thing is to have elements of glue and uh, have a glue stick and put it on glass or something, and even think that that is even. It's not even. So the best is, in my opinion, is, and um, the other thing is, I put my glass straight from the, I don't put any kind of tube to remove my pots, because glass has one coefficient uh, of uh, expansion. Plastic has almost none. So if you heat up the glass, and you put uh, plastic on it. If you put the glass inside the freezer for 10 minutes, it will print. Plastic would not. So in this tiny, tiny layer between the glass bed and the plastic, it would be an enormous force. And that will knock off plastic pieces without any force because it goes so slow, 
and it happens in that layer in, in that thin layer of something you can use elements glue it's working you can use uh, um, whatever plastic metal plastic sheet you put on but it will not work as good as on plastic sheets as on uh, glass with some kind of of uh, adhesion improvement. That is good. If you have a fragile piece, put it in this one or outside. The temperature will remove the cost. And it is also, if you, if you have it in the printer and you start using a hammer to take away the parts, because you have a perfect first layer, you will bend all your axes in the print, so it will never be okay again. <coughs> so the best is take the glass sheet out and pull it. More questions? Yes. What are the optimal number of points to do a mesh measurement? And is it an even number or not even number? Doesn't it really matter? But, uh, less than nine. Because if you go above nine points in X or Y, uh, then the software will not uh, handle it. So less than nine. Or is, I think, a good solution. nine points takes time. Four points is almost perfect for everything that is. I have a big box which I use uh, daily. I print about one kilo filament a day. I use a Volcano. I print parts that are twenty five centimeters in diameter and um, four points is good for me they are huge so um, four points takes one minute to do nine points takes four minutes to do that's the bit four points in 24 hour printing that's nothing so Everything about three and less than one. And I don't know what's happening in version 2.0 of Marlin, but I think they still will have less than nine. Yes. Uh, in how many layers does it even out? Five. In five layers. So yeah. Yeah. That's for now. And that is, I think, seven. One point one point seven is not effective anymore as a layer five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But even if you look back at an older one point zero. It was not effective. It was self trimming of the fire day. It's not, doesn't have effect. The main part it has effect on is the first day. We find the difference between uh, a cool bed and a hot bed. <clears throat> so if you do the leveling on a cool bed, we'll, uh, obviously the heat is going to change. You heat the bed and wait for this to improve. Uh, I prefer glass. Yeah. Uh, I have done this with CNC machines. They use a solid block pot that is this thick and enormous and weigh a lot of kilos. 
Um, that is because that is affecting in all directions with saying it will expand in, in all directions. Glass will also expand in all directions. A good heated bed will produce heat to the, the glass and that will distribute the they heat even, and the difference is the uh, hardened glass is um, less. It's better to use borosilicate glass, which is uh, Purex, uh, than uh, normal glass, and it's uh, better than have. Uh, glass. I use regular window glass because uh, a five millimeter sheet. Because uh, a friend of mine is a uh, window maker. Yeah. Uh, I first asked for hardened glass, but he says when you harden glass, the surface gets uneven. Okay, yeah. so he said it's better to use regular glass. Yes. Yeah. And uh, since the bed heats it slowly and too slowly, uh, and I've used it for like six months. I was concerned that I was going to break the glass. No. But a five millimeter, you can have to break it. Borosilicate uh, uh, glass is used in uh, stoves, on, uh, yeah, on, on the window. Keramic, on the window, on the stove, on top. Oh. And yeah. it's used in uh, stoves. Uh, uh, and it's what fireplace? Fireplace, uh, and it's uh, fire resistant, and it's also resistant against heat. So it's actually the best, but it's four times more expensive than normal glass. And neon glass is better than than uh, window glass. It's actually better quality on metal glass than than window glass. I have a <coughs> printer, a Sanofi Chinese printer, which does not have any. Where do you suggest I start? What what should I do if I want to? Make it? The first part, uh, there is three different kinds of probes. There is the, the probes that use a cerebral. There is the kind that have not used a cerebral but uses solenoid. And there is the, the fixed mounted. The fixed mounted is very, very easy to, to convert. Actually, just taking the the end stop from the from the cell and move it up and uh, put it on the printer head instead. You have the same micro switch. The problem is that the micro switch needs to be lower than the nozzle. So you yeah, have to sir. move it. Yeah. That is why the servo is invented. So the servo is uh, moving the micro switch in position and remove it when it's when the leveling is done. The precision of the micro switch is almost okay. I forgot one. That is the uh, sensors that feels something is under the sensor, inductive or capacitive. Sensor. The best thing with the in um, back to the simple one. That is what the probe does. It's just shorts to wires. Then you have the moving part. Move it away. That's the server part. If you go for the inductive, you have it above the nozzle. So the, Distance is feeling is below the nozzle, so uh, it acts 
the same way. The problem you have is that they are easy to, to, to uh, I use inductive probes to improve the capacity. I put raised very precise, but the razor blade is very precise. So I feel the razor blade under the glass instead of actually feeling the glass. And that is not affecting the printing at all. And it's not affecting any flaws in the bed. That is the most cheapest working solution you can get. And it's quick. And what's the simplest way? To do this, I am totally a new beginner at this. Point. Okay, uh, the easiest way to, to there is the interface cards available. You put the inductive sensor on the board, and on the other side, is way to, to there is the interface cards available. You put the inductive sensor on the board, and on the other side, you have a connector, you just plug it in, done. Do you have a brand or something right now? Uh, I don't know the brand, but I can tell you what it is. So it's not um, there is also another brand that's been copied a lot. It's BL Touch. BL Touch has, uh, instead of the server, it, to set up the software for it. Uh, there is a part in more involved firmware in configuration dot uh, H. My suggestion is the learning curve that you start with mesh bed leveling, the manual one, and use paper. Use that first. When you know how that is working, then you try your first code. Be doing that for you. So that's why I want to do the all the bed because I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> a lot. Um, the next thing is to, to look what kind of board do you have? Does the board support servers? If the board supports servers, the video touch is the fastest, easiest way to get a server up and running. There is another solution that is uh, if you have a magnet and you have a hull element, you can feel the force and force from the magnet. And when the magnet is switching from south to north, um, it closes the output. The hull switch is uh, 10 to 20 pounds or one dollar. And uh, it's very simple. Uh, the problem is that the pin is not uh, rem removed automatically. If you have the magnet, you put a magnet on top, five millimeters from uh, the magnet. When the nozzle goes down, the upper magnet will suck. Pin and the magnet up. Then you have to pull down the pin and the magnet each time you stop the pin. That is a very good solution for the bed because they have so small amount of space around the head. And the pin can go above through the plate and everything and go down. So the sensor is going. About basically um, more complicated, but that was not easy. Oh. Okay. 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 But I can show you the, mm -hmm. how to do it. It's quite easy. More questions?
how many have done the configuration in modern or up to that level? One. Okay. Um, that's why you are here. That's why you are here. Correct. So, what you can do is if you download modern 3D printer 2, you take your current firmware you have and you download. Correct. <laughs> so, what you can do is if you download modern 3D printer 2, you take your current firmware you have and you download. You can even download the same um, the same firmware. You get a uh, user interface for changing modern firmware. So if you go there, you see that automated leveling is just one click away. And then it will change the configuration of H and then in test. So it's done. 10 minutes. So um, that is uh, because going with a notepad and change all the files that's needed takes some time. For if you want to do it quick, okay, for changing one problem. So if you go there, you see that okay, that makes just one click away. And then we we'll change the configuration for H and then test. So it's done 10 minutes. So that is a go with a notepad and change all the files that's needed. That's made it easy. We have yeah. to fix it. Yeah, that's so go back. Yeah. <clears throat> but you can actually do it on uh, Windows uh, emulator on Mac. <coughs> but that part should be able to be converted to converted to optimal job optimal job on the same program. I think so. <laughs> so, so, sorry about the presentation that was broken. But feel free to, to find me up there, find me up there, and I will stop it. And I will stop it. If you have your printer here, I can even look at it. Thank you for your comments. Hmm? 